morning, y'all. Good morning, everybody. All right, how's everyone doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing well. Nice, nice. Very well. Yeah. So we have some good stories. Ooh, all what right. Do do? What, have we, what have we got? What have we got? Well, today from the Old Testament, we're going to hear about Isaac and Rebecca. <laughs> so I'm going to read this story from the Spark Study Bible. <clears throat> and boys and girls can uh, read it as well. And if they don't have one of these books, they just need to let Pastor Rebecca, Daniel, and me know, and we'll get you one. Is it Rebecca right. with two C's or Rebecca with a K? This one was with a K. K A H. <laughs> yeah, right. it was the original. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. so what do y'all know about uh, Rebecca and Isaac? By the way, is this? Do you know about the story, or you want me to just read it? Well, I just read it. It's been a minute since I've looked at it. Okay. I think to connect us back. Um, so when we left off last time, Abraham and Sarah were still waiting on a kid. Yes. And Isaac, who is uh, in the story today as a grown-up. Isaac was that kid so now yeah. we finally have like it finally came true Abraham yeah. and Sarah had the kid that God promised they would have and so and that is Isaac so and now we we run into Isaac years later thank you Pastor Reagan. that's very important because Abraham and Sarah we know are so important and we talked about them last week and, and of course well the story continues so it's it's this is a, a big story and it's all connected. All right, so here's the next part. Rebecca and Isaac. <clears throat> God kept the promise to Abraham that he would have many children. God promised that Abraham's son Isaac would have lots of children too. When Abraham was very old, he asked the servant to help find a wife for Isaac. The servant needed to go to a place where the people believed in God. So we went on a long, long journey to the town where Abraham grew up. When he got to the town, the servant knew that he needed to find a woman who would be Isaac's wife, but he didn't know how to find her. He prayed to God for help. He said, God, I will go to the well in this town and ask a woman for a drink. If she gives me a drink of water and offers to get a drink from my camels, then I will know that she is the right one. The servant waited patiently by the well. In the evening, a beautiful woman came to fill her jars with water. Her name was... Rebecca. The servant asked her for a drink. Rebecca replied, sir, here's a drink for you. Let me get some water for your camels too. Rebecca showed wonderful kindness. The servant believed God heard his prayer. God sent me a very long way to find you, he told her. God has a plan for you to marry a woman named Isaac. God has promised that you and Isaac will have many children. I have always wanted to have a big family, Rebecca said with a smile. I know that God keeps promises. I will marry Isaac. When Isaac and Rebecca got married, Isaac prayed. After Isaac and Rebecca got married, Isaac prayed for children. Isaac and Rebecca had twin boys named Esau and Jacob. Isaac's children were Abraham's grandchildren, just like God had promised. Okay. What do you think? What's the what's the lesson here for our boys and girls? <laughs> well, there's probably more than one. Yeah. But what's one big lesson? God so, follows through on his promises. There you go. God I'm promises not. and God follows through on promises. You know, I, I kind of read this and I was thinking too, I wonder what it was like for Rebecca from her yeah. perspective. Because yeah. here she is just going to the well, minding her own mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And gets told this is what's going to happen. Yep. So, um, and she's so, open to it. That's the other she's thing. She's open she to it. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, fact that she like it. doesn't run away and be like, you know what? Let me let me come back later when this creepy person isn't here or something like yes. that. Like she listens yeah. and she says, okay, let's let's make leave some room to consider where God is at work. So I thought that was cool. Yes. So yeah. good. And then we also have some twins coming up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What could go wrong there? No. I think twins are better. No. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so, our second story. <laughs> this is our second story. Our second, sto <clears throat> our second story is from the New Testament. 
And so, like Pastor Rebecca did a second ago, what we've talked about in the past few weeks is Jesus is born and Jesus um, is named, etc. Mm -hmm. And now Jesus is all grown up and Jesus has a public ministry. He's a He's beginning to, beginning to be a public person. So the people, who is this? Who is this Jesus guy? Who is this? I heard, did you hear what he did? They're starting, they're getting ready. He's getting ready to be somebody that a lot of people know. Mm -hmm. So he goes to Nazareth. Jesus goes to Nazareth. Let, let's read that story. Why is Nazareth important here? That's where he's from. Yeah, he's going back to his hometown. Mm -hmm. Again, what could go wrong? All right, here we go. <laughs> Jesus goes to Nazareth. Jesus went to synagogues. What's in the synagogues? Uh, it's where people of the worship. Place go and yes, worship. holy places where people worship. That's right. Jesus went to synagogues to teach people about God. He went to synagogues all over, even in his hometown, Nazareth. Jesus said, told the people, I was sent to tell you that God loves you and poor people, and sick people, and people in prison. But the people didn't believe Jesus' words. Why are you talking about sick people, and poor people, and people in prison? Everyone knows that God doesn't care about them, he said. I am here to show you that God's way is love for all people, said Jesus. The people began to grumble, 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 grumble. Their grumbling grew to shouting. Their shouting turned to shoving. Their shoving turned to chasing Jesus out of the synagogue. Go away, Jesus. Jesus went away from there, but he kept on telling people and showing people about God's love. Wow. Mm. Well, that's unexpected. I thought everybody liked Jesus. Well, I think we see in this that Jesus is... Um challenging the way people think honestly it, it's a change uh because you talk about um jesus is preaching this love for sick people and poor people and even the prisoners um and at the time especially there was this sense that oh if someone's sick or someone's poor or they're they're low on the totem pole that there's a reason for that and that god stays away from those people mm -hmm. um and Jesus was sort of upending their way of seeing things and saying, no, actually, they're the people who need love the most. They're the people we need to get to and be with the most. Go be with those people. And that was so different from what people thought they knew was right. And sometimes it's hard having your thinking challenged. It can be um, scary for some folks, especially if it's a big change. And so... I think that was a bit of what was going on is that Jesus was challenging them to think in a whole new way. And they yeah. may, or may not have been ready for it. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's, it's kind of hard to think of a, of a church chasing Jesus out saying, Jesus, you take all your nice ideas about helping people who are different from you. And get out of here. This is a church. <laughs> this is a, God. this is where holy things happen. Take all those ideas elsewhere. But that's, that's what he was doing. And, and gosh, it's a good thing that doesn't happen today. Does it? <laughs> I think yeah. we still struggle with that. I think we do too. I think we do too. Mm -hmm. I that's think not all, I think sometimes we forget <clears throat> um, the church is about welcoming people. And, you know, this fall, this year at St. Matthew's, we've been talking a lot about those words, radical welcome. Mm -hmm. and what does that mean anyway for boys and girls they probably think what does that mean what does radical welcome even mean what does that mean what do y'all think um i think of radical in the sense that it's just questioning that notion of welcome and taking it to a, a sense that people like we see in the story like people thought jesus was kind of crazy and out there for some of the suggestions that he made but that's that's really what we're getting at we want to be a place that welcomes in such a way that people kind of scratch their heads and maybe wonder what's going on mm. I, I think the welcome we're looking for it's not a welcome that looks strange or crazy to God because it's exactly how God wants us to welcome people 
um, but it's a kind of welcome that may stretch us because the people that we're looking to welcome in um, look different from us or have, have done things differently from us or may have different needs or different um, ideas or um, grown up differently. It just people who are not the same as us and see things in a different way, they introduce um, new ways of seeing. And again, it's going to challenge the way we've always seen things. But I think radical welcome, when it's done well, it ends up stretching us a little bit and helping us grow um, to, to, to be able to see things in a bigger way. And, and that's, PR, you're right. See, that's not easy to do. For, for for everybody, sometimes the, the people extending the, the radical welcome, saying you're welcome, that's not easy because not everybody's going to say, really? Yeah. Here? Yeah. And then for the other people who are receiving the welcome, it's hard for them because they may think, do they really want me there? Mm -hmm. And then for the other people around, it's difficult because they may think uh, that person's different for me, maybe I should be afraid of them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard. It's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. But it, just like it wasn't easy for Jesus. Look, he got run out of the, the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think we know what we should do. Um, but doing it can sometimes be a challenge. And we do better at sometimes and sometimes not so well. That's right. I think we always know yeah. what we should be doing, but we don't always do it. As they used to say at the end of the G.I. Joe cartoons, and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> uh, All right. What else might we say about this story? There, it's just the beginning. There's more to come. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Well, what is next week? So next week, we're going to read about, hang on a second, I can't see. We're going to read about, uh, oh, we are going to read about Jacob and Esau. We're mm -hmm. going to hear about the. Uh, the twins. All right. And we are going to hear about Jesus calling the first disciples. Mm. Well, that's, those are going to be good stories. Do you think he used an iPhone or a Samsung when he called them? Um, I, and did he call or text? Maybe he sent a Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would Jesus be on TikTok today? <laughs> Let the boys and girls decide. I bet yeah. Jesus was a little old school. He made a Facebook event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if he's really old school, it was MySpace. <laughs> mm, that's right. What a what a throwback. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. All right. I hope y'all have a great week. All right. See you next right. time. Bye now. Bye, everybody.